type of story that could have changed your projection of where, of where you are today? Yeah, man, I um, I tell this story all the time, Jay, and I know a lot a lot of youngsters can can relate to this. I remember um, I was um, I was actually getting ready to um, start getting ready for the draft in '97, and um, right before I was getting ready to get uh, get, get drafted, I did a couple work. I, I mean, I I've been overseas, and I and uh, and um, you know, y'all, everybody that went in '96, I had to come back a year later because I, you know, I um, I didn't go to college. So, long story short, my homeboys at home and uh, one of my homeboys that was hustling at the time, and the feds was in his house jail, uh, and he called me. He used to look out for me. He was well, my older brother got killed, so he was real tight with my older brother. So my older brother died. He felt like he had to pick up the role of, of my older brother. So the feds in his house, they tan the house up. I played basketball with his little cousin, who he, who they, who he stayed with at the time. So he called me. He's like, bro, I need you. The feds, in, they're in my house. They tan the house up. I'm like, what's up, bro? He's like, they, whatever they're looking for is not in my room. It's in the front of the house. So I go to the house. I knock on the door. His aunt answers the door. She like, um, um, see his nephew. Cause we play basketball, but I'm like the police is, I'm see police everywhere. I'm just here to check on the house, check on my homeboy. And they went back to the back of the room. When they went to the back jail, I went under the couch and grabbed what, what, what I was supposed to be there to get and put it in my drawers and walked out the house and was going to meet my homeboy. As soon as I grabbed my, my, my car door, the feds came out running. Jackson, Jackson, Jackson. Immediately broke out. I'm talking about sweat. I'm talking about just a cold sweat. Like somebody poured water <laughs> on me, bro. Just sweating. I got nine ounces of hard in my drawers that I didn't grab out the house and try to run with it. And uh, as they came outside, they all like Jackson, Jack, Jackson. And uh, I remember the officer had had his card. He gave me his card. He was like, "We know you know what such. We know we know you know what John Johnson is. Uh, tell him to call us." And I just exhaled, bro. Got my car burnt off and. From that day, I never put myself in that position again. As much as I love what my homeboys did for me, as as, mu as much as I appreciate him buying me clothes and getting me high and all that, that moment, that was the end of it for me, you know, because I I, I knew how all they had to do was search me, J.O. You would have never heard about me. I would have never got drafted. Nothing would have ever happened. And in Texas, you get a year for, for each gram of cocaine, not even ounce. For each gram, you get a year. I had nine ounces, so they would they they would have hid me by under the jail under the jail cell. And I said that God God was definitely watching over me. And that moment after after I realized what I had just did and how close I came to ruining my life, jail that that woke me up completely. Man, and and, and it's crazy, bro. Like these experience, right? And you know the thing that people want to do is make sure. And again, we're telling y'all this. You know, because, you know, we're not promoting you going out and making bad decisions and then say, okay, well, hey, they made bad decisions so and made it so we can do it. No, it don't work that way. Nah. You know, we, we're trying to educate you on some decision that we made at young age. You don't have to go through it. Right. So you don't have to go through what we went through. And, you know, even for my situation, is, is she, you know, she tried to vouch for it. Like, hey, look, he, you know, he didn't make me do anything and it didn't even matter, bro, because the law was the law. So... You know, those those are some of the stories, man. I think is that is important from a youth youth perspective. Another thing that I want to get into, because I want people, uh, obviously, you know how much I admire you as a brother, man. We've been knowing each other for a long, long time. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you was a McDonald's All American. Um, talk about your experience and your decisions that you had to make after the McDonald's All American game. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I. I felt like I had made a, a big statement at the McDonald's game. You know, you, Tim Thomas, Kobe, Rip, all y'all in the game, all the players that was always ahead of us. And we all knew you and Kobe was going straight out of high school. We actually thought Tim was, too. Mm -hmm. We actually thought Tim was, too. And uh, and um, at the McDonald's game, when I led the game in scoring jail, I actually was like, you know, I've already signed to go to University of Arizona, but shit, I, I'm only going to college to get to the NBA. And I played this well in the game. Well, maybe I can. It don't work like that. So I ended up going to Arizona and not passing the test. 
and that come from me not taking school serious. So all this stuff is a domino effect. We we got to start at the, you know what I'm saying? It's all a domino effect. But um, I didn't take school serious, Jay, and I ended up getting cut. I ended up getting kicked off campus, and Arizona ended up winning the national championship. Mm. I signed. We had the number of recruiting class. I was there the whole first semester. Didn't pass the test. They kicked me off campus. They ended up wishing to win the national championship, right? Mm. So I'm like, God damn. And I missed the national championship. All I do was pass the test. End up, a long story short, end up going to Venezuela, Dominican Republic, Australia, and, um, and uh, Puerto Rico. And I played there. I broke both of my feet in that time. And I tried out for 19 NBA teams. Got cut by all 19 teams. Uh, at one of the second time I broke my foot, I was trying out for the Bulls jail. And, you know, when you first get there, when you're trying out, you're not on team to give you those little pennies. <laughs> so the first day I had the pen. <laughs> a week later, J.O., I was on the starting team, and that was the same day they was making cuts. So I damn near made the team. Broke my foot 10 minutes into practice. Mm. So true story. I, uh, I go back to the hotel. I call my mom like, Mama, this is my second time breaking my foot. You know, I to, I'm, I'm going to have to find something else to do. You know, I'm crying to her. She don't say nothing for about 15 minutes. The first word she say, are you going to give up? <laughs> that's it? That does sound like it, too. <laughs> that's it? And I'm like, I'm like, I, I, I just stopped my tears. I'm like, that was not the response I expected. So I'm wiping my face. I'm like, well, I guess not. That's how you saying it. <laughs> I guess not. So I, I suck it up, J.O. End up um, going back to... Um, to Vancouver, playing on a um, summer league team, second in the second in the league in scoring, end up uh, signing with the um, New Jersey Nets in 2000, 2001, and starting my first NBA game. But the road was crazy. There's a lot of stories in between that, but that was the road to make me. I think that was the road. It was paid for me, Jail, because I wouldn't have appreciated everything. That you know, when I once I got to the NBA, I wouldn't appreciate it. The the journey, the ride, the money, the experience, the people, everything that I went through my 14 years in the league. If I wouldn't have went through that little journey before, I wouldn't appreciate it. Bro, you know the thing that I always think about every time I, I think about you is your mentality and your mindset, right? If you don't have those two, there's no way in the world, and especially the path you went down. Right, a lot of people that gave up a long time ago. You see a lot of kids out here now. They don't, you know, if you know they're not on this team or doing this or doing that. Uh, they get discouraged and, mm -hmm. and they want to give up. Right? I mean, you're a clear cut case of a person that went through this trials and tribulations from the University of Arizona to overseas to injuries to then come back and 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 turn it up on them because your mentality was just different. And that's one of the biggest things that I talked to you know, a lot of our kids and coaches and parents about is that, you know, it ain't as much as your physical at attribute, attributes because it's a lot of good players out there. Yeah. Right? Or in any business sector, a lot of smart people out there. It's about your mentality. Are you a dog? Mm -hmm. Right. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to accomplish your goals and, and, and not care about what nobody else thinks because it's your goals. Mm -hmm. And, and that I, I wholeheartedly respect from you, bro, because, um, that embodies everything else that we're going to jump into as well. And I think before we do it into it, get into those, I look at my process getting into Portland where it was four years of, hey, bro, like disrespect, disrespect. I'm like, man, you know, my first year, I said, okay, well, I'm not, you, you know, I'm on, the, I'm on, the, I'm on the team with Gary Trent, she, Wallace, a bone. I said, man, these boys, here strong. Mm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I go from being the you know, best you know, being at my position, in, you know, every time I step on the court to being the fifth best at my at, at my own position, mm -hmm. right? You know, you know, being considered one of the best in the country every time you come into, you know, a, a high school, you know, gym or, audit, you know, auditor or whatever it may be, and then get into the pros and you're like, well, damn. Different. And these, these boys here can go. And then you see yourself, you know, progressing, but then you see your opportunity declining. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, you know, and that's the thing that I struggle with where, you know, I, you know, I was put in situations like they told me, don't, don't Mike Dunley told me, don't even shoot. Just go get the rebound and block a shot. I said, wait, hold on. I, what do you mean, don't shoot? 
<laughs> like, and, like, and, and you know what's crazy? A lot of people don't know. You and Kobe was going through that at the same time. Same time. Yep. Kobe same went through time. it his first two years, too. The same shit. Yeah, man. And, and and I end up going, like, I end up signing back with them because they said, okay, well, your, your minutes going to increase. We were close to winning the championship. We had the team, you know, that roster. And then my time went down, which ultimately may cost me for getting in because it hindered my overall stats. If you take my first four years and look at from day one, I stepped into Indiana mm -hmm. and then to, till I retired, look at those numbers, right? Yeah. And, you know, and, and but that still didn't really bother me because I knew who I was. I knew what I wanted. And, you know, the thing I want to tell people is that because it looks bad today, don't mean it's going to be bad tomorrow. Man, ain't that true. 